Hello, welcome back to a new video game review. So recently, the second in the series of Darkest Dungeon came out. The sequel, Darkest Dungeon 2, released today, and as an avid fan of the original game, I just had to buy this game and make a review. Now, things I really liked from the original game were the atmosphere, the music, the amazing voice actor, and the overall tone and feeling of the game. I really liked how dark and brooding it was, and the gameplay was very addictive. So as you could imagine, I was really excited to hear that a sequel was being made. Unfortunately, after playing the sequel for several hours, I have to say that it is not up to my standards, and I got pretty bored of it fairly quickly. So in the original game, you had a village, and you could recruit fighters to the village, and form teams, and send the teams into dungeons, and then you, you go through the dungeon, and you fight the monsters, and you get loot. That's why it's called Darkest Dungeon. And then you could upgrade the village buildings, and each building in the village served a purpose. Some buildings could heal members, some buildings could upgrade members' skills, some buildings could recruit new members. And I just really like this whole setup. I like the whole concept of having a base and then recruiting heroes to the base and sending them out. Unfortunately, in the sequel to Darkest Dungeon, in Darkest Dungeon 2, they've completely scrapped this gameplay mechanic and replaced it with something that's much worse. Remember in the beginning of the first Darkest Dungeon, there was that little intro with the stagecoach, and your first hero arrives at the village or the hamlet in the stagecoach. And for some reason, I have no idea why, but they've decided to take the intro of the first game and make that into the entirety of the second game. So it's kind of like this weird mini game where you control the stagecoach and you've got to drive it and you've got to steer it down a path and you've got several options, directions you can choose from as the stagecoach is moving, moving forwards. You could choose battles or you could choose items or you could choose like a mystery lane that would give you an unexpected outcome. And to be honest, I just find this whole stagecoach thing to be really kind of lame and boring. You spend the whole time just pressing W to go forwards and then steering left or right. And then the only decision making is if you want to choose a battle or if you want to avoid a battle. And then there's landmarks on the way, like there's an inn, there's different buildings, outposts, and you can enter the buildings and then there's battles in there as well. Now, the only reason why you would want to play Darkest Dungeon is for the addictive turn-based action RPG kind of gameplay. And I don't want to be spending half the time, or possibly even more than half the time, pressing W and steering a stagecoach, because that's what it felt like. I played for a total of four hours, and I felt like I was just steering the stagecoach for 75% of the time, and then, and then in between all of the driving and the steering, you finally get some action, you get to do a bit of combat, and then it's back to the boring steering the stupid stagecoach thing again. And then at certain stops, at inns, you can upgrade the stagecoach and then you give items and buffs to your heroes who are resting and probably tired. There's just no challenge or anything fun about the stagecoach bit. You steer it along the path or the road and you have to avoid obstacles and you have to crash into crates to get items. It's just kind of boring. I wish you could skip it. I wish you could just do auto drive, autopilot, and then skip to the next location where there's a battle. Okay, so the gameplay, when you finally get to it, is pretty much exactly the same as the first game. I didn't really notice anything different. Even the skills and the names of the skills of each hero are exactly the same. You get the exact same types of heroes you got in the first one. But the major difference is you can't really mix and match different heroes in a party. So in the first game, you could have four of the same type of hero, which could be pretty funny. You could have four of the rogues, or four of the plague doctors, or four of the man of arms if you wanted to. But in this game, you can only choose one of each of the heroes, which makes customizing and choosing and creating a party kind of boring. And it was also really frustrating because I kept dying and you can't really recruit new members. If you lose a member in your party on the road, you can't recruit a new one whilst you're on the road. So you end up losing members along the way until you get to a point where you can't really fight and win anymore and then you lose everyone. And then it's like game over. You get sent straight back to the beginning of the chapter. Chapter one is called Denial. I've had to start over from the beginning of Denial at least four times now and I still cannot get to the end. I don't even know what's at the end. 
at least in the original game, if you lose your entire party, you just end up back at the hamlet. And then you can recruit new heroes and then create a new party. And then if anyone gets injured, you can put them into a, a healing building like the brothel or the inn or the hospital. In this one, there's not really anything you can do when your party starts starts to die. Now, my second problem with the game is the art style. So the original art style had a very 2D flat kind of comic book art style. And the second game, Darkest Dungeon 2, still has that same kind of art style. But for some reason, they've made it look 3D, which is really weird, and I don't like it. So in the first one, so the first one, they kind of just had a very flat, static animation. When they were standing there, they would kind of jiggle, bounce up and down, so it looked like they were moving. But they weren't really animated or 3D dynamically moving. And when they attacked, there were just a few a few frames of attack animation. You could barely even call it animation. It was like slideshow of some sort but I really liked it and in this new one Darkest Dungeon 2 they've got this weird 3D kind of look it just seems very out of place and also they've made the heads of the characters more realistic in size so in the first one they had really big heads and it kind of gave them a bit of a charming cute adorable look even though it was in like this grim depressing dark atmosphere now they've got realistic looking heads each of the characters and the enemies they they look more realistic but that isn't a good thing because i liked the way how they look kind of cartoony in the first game now that kind of cartoony charm from the first game has has gone a little bit which is a real shame so yeah, I don't know if I could really recommend this game because even though I love the franchise and the original one, it's like the second one is exactly the same as the first one, but kind of worse. I don't really feel like there's anything about the second one that is any better. I don't know what it does better than the first one. I would much rather play Darkest Dungeon 1, to be honest, and do the whole Hamlet hero recruitment concept gameplay, which... I find much more interesting than this stagecoach thing. I don't know if the entire game is is all stagecoach driving. Maybe later in the game or in the other chapters, you get to be in a village and then you can upgrade the village. Uh, I'm not sure if I would have the patience to continue playing the game to get to that point. But so far, um, I mean, you can see they tried something new because they couldn't just copy and paste the exact same game. But really, it doesn't feel much like a sequel. It feels more like an add-on, like an extra bonus mini game added on to the original game. It just doesn't really feel like a fully fledged sequel. So yeah, I would have to give it a 4.5 out of 10. Unfortunately, yeah.